No matter how down you are about dating relationships and men, treat men as individuals who are interesting and worthy. Give them the benefit of the doubt. You're not here to figure out your future. You're not here to figure out if you're compatible. You're here to be a pleasant conversationalist who is inquisitive, and that inquisitiveness engenders someone to like you and also turn the tables and ask you more about you, and this is how we could forge connections. It's a thousand degrees in my office, but um, it's the end of the day, so I'm going to share something with you that's been on my mind for some time. And it's something that strangely doesn't get much play when we're talking about dating. I think that's why I like doing this podcast. We get to talk about things that are not commonly talked about, I, w I would guess. And today we're going to talk about the value of being nice. And I know nice isn't a word that we associate with dating. You don't find the dating process to be nice. You don't find men to be nice. Uh, the experience itself can often be unpleasant. And I'm not going to deny you that reality. I will say that I did enjoy dating for a very long period of time. I dated pre-dating app, but I did enjoy dating for a very long time. And I keep on getting real world validation about the purpose of being nice. First, I want to share a couple stories. I don't know that I'm necessarily the hero of the story. You never want to tell a story where you're the hero. You always want to make fun of yourself. These are not stories where I'm making fun of myself, but I am talking about the, the kindness of strangers. The other day, I went to uh, return a package, a pair of sneakers to Zappos, known for their customer service. Easy drop off at the UPS store. After the UPS store, I was going to drop off. I was going to do a couple other errands, go buy some some food at Trader Joe's and stop at the bank to, to uh, deposit some checks. And when I went to deposit the checks, I discovered my checks weren't in the car. And then I realized the checks were sitting on top of the box that I was mailing back to Zappos and the checks must have slipped into the box, which means I mailed money to the Zappos return center. And once I realized that I hurried back to the store, I was probably gone for only about 25 minutes. And they said to me, I'm sorry, Mr. Katz, the truck is already gone. I said, well, what? I was just gone for 25 minutes. Yes, it's already gone. And uh, I was like, oh, well, uh, is there anything we could do? I'm sorry, Mr. Katz, there's 500 parcels on there. They're all brown boxes. I've, we've, we can't turn it around. It would delay everything else. So, so now I'm afraid there's probably not that much we can do. And then one, one woman was like, wait, do you have the original shipping label? And she starts typing to the computer and she finds my name and da 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 da. And she says, I'll make a call to the next center. There's a whole logistical thing. I wasn't expecting them to be able to, to do anything. They said they were going to try, but basically it's out of their hands right now. It's on the road along with a bunch of other packages. And I'm giving you the longer version of the story because it has a happy ending. I also called Zappos when I got home. Hey, what could you do? Well, there's not much we can do, but if it comes to our center, instead of opening the package and hoping that someone doesn't steal your checks, we will automatically send the package back. So again, I'm going to get the money that I accidentally shipped off somehow, but it's going to be highly inconvenient for everybody. Two hours later, I get a call for, from UPS. Mr. Katz, we found your package. We opened the box. We took the checks out. They're sitting in an envelope in our center, and we put the package back in the mail. I was over the moon. Best customer service I've seen in my entire life. I went back to the store. I picked up my checks. I complimented everybody on the team. I got everybody's name. I called UPS headquarters. I sat on the phone for a half hour to compliment this service center in Woodland Hills, California. When I finally got like the regional manager on the phone, she couldn't believe. I mean, A, it's a ridiculous story. I mean, like an embarrassing story. But she's she, she she kept on saying the word complaint. She's like, so Mr. Katz, what's your complaint? I was like, I'm not calling with a complaint. I'm calling calling with just compliment. I got extraordinary service from your team and I just wanted to acknowledge them. I don't know if you could give them a, an award or employee of the month or cite their center or something, but it was worth a half hour for me to wait on the phone to tell you that these guys went above and beyond for customer service. So thank you so much, Mr. Katz. Um, we're, you know, we're not used to hearing those kind of things when it comes to UPS shipping. It's usually complaints, but you know, I'm glad to see our team's doing well, blah, 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 blah. When I went back to the store, she said, that's what you get when you're really nice. It didn't occur to me that I was being really nice. I didn't yell at anybody. They didn't do anything wrong by mailing off my package. I was the one who screwed up by mailing off my package. I didn't rant and rave. There was nothing to do uh, apart from say, thank you for doing your best and keep me posted. Um, but apparently that was not the way they're used to being treated there. So they really went above and beyond. And I thought that was delightful. 
And if that wasn't enough of a story, a couple of days before that was my birthday dinner. And we went out to dinner at a local restaurant and we had a lovely experience with the servers, 23 year old uh, local girl, Indian American heritage. That's a bubbly personality. My wife and I were laughing a lot. Good banter, great service, paid a lot of attention to us. And we, we just had fun. She enhanced the evening. She didn't just bring us food. She enhanced the evening. So at the end of the the evening, I, you know, she's like, Hey, you guys can come back and you'll be regulars. And I was like, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't come back to the same restaurants over and over again to the point that we're going to be regulars anyway. Um, that's probably not in the cards for us. We're parents. We got other things going on, but you did such a great job tonight. I, you know, glad to tell your manager that you're doing well. Cause she said it was like her first week on the job. So if she calls her manager over and we talk to the manager and we tell her how good her employee was doing. And the manager took a shine to my wife and I and sat down and talked with us for about 35 minutes and put the dessert on the house and gave us a free bottle of champagne for my birthday before we left. And what did I do? I issued a genuine compliment. It wasn't like a, like a game. I was like, let's see if I could extract a free bottle of champagne out of this. I was just paying a compliment. I want you to consider, is that your default energy in life? Do you say nice things when you think of them? Because again, I'm a flawed person. Uh, those flaws are self-evident when I when I do this podcast and for anybody who knows me well. But one thing I've never had trouble doing is issuing a compliment. Like if I think something, I'll say it. I, I remember being at a theater and I saw some woman wearing like these cool fishnet stockings and I just went up to her and I was like, those are great. Where where did you get them? How can I get them for my wife? Like, that, like that's who I am. Like uh, if someone has, you know, beautiful eyes, I'll tell them. If someone has a great laugh, I'll tell them. If someone... Um, has a unique sense of style. It was at my daughter's uh, back to school night. And there was one girl who all the other girls are dressed like, you know, uh, wearing black hoodies. And I mean, that's the, the style for, for seventh graders right now, like black hoodies. And there was one girl who had this really unique sense of style. And I just went up to her up to the open house. I was like, you're really killing it. You, you know, you're, you've, you've got the best sense of style in this whole class. Costs nothing to say nice things to people. And it pays off in so many ways, not because you get back. You, it, it pays off because you make someone feel good. It takes no time. It takes no energy. There's nothing embarrassing about issuing a compliment. It's always well-received, especially if it's not the most obvious compliment. If you tell a smart person that they're attractive, they're going to pay closer attention. If you tell an attractive person that they're smart, they're going to pay attention. If you really just come from the heart, it's almost foolproof. So now let's take that and extrapolate that to dating. Are you nice when it comes to dating? And if your first reaction is, well, I'm not particularly nice, but really it's because men are so terrible. I hear you. I understand you. I'm not going to de defend the worst behaviors of men in any way, shape, or form. But it's kind of like, you know, be the change you want to see. I remember when I was single, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't the man I was now. This was 20 years ago. But... I always went into the date thinking, A, I'm going to give the best performance that I can right, to show her a good time, to leave her with a good taste in her mouth, to give myself the opportunity to make everybody theoretically like me. So if I want to go on a second date, I have the capacity to get a second date. If everybody has a good time on the first date, that gives me a lot of options. Imagine having 10 job offers. Imagine every person you go out with says, yeah, I'd love to see you again because I, they had such a great time with you. You can't always make that happen, but you can give people a positive experience the same exact way, right? But it takes a conscious effort. That's not the energy most of us have when we're, we're dating. Most women's energy on a date is literally the thought bubble over their head is, what's wrong with this guy? Like, what's wrong with this guy? It's not obvious yet. I mean, sometimes it's really obvious what's wrong with him, but sometimes it's not obvious. So what's his deal? Did he vote for the other party? Has this guy got addiction issues? How long was his seri most serious relationship? Is he on the rebound? Is he looking for something serious now? All right, does, he, does this guy have money or does, does he have some sort of like vague job where you know, he's living with roommates in his 50s? We're trying to solve men like they're puzzles, like an interrogator. I'm going to figure this out in the first 90 minutes. And that's not a great energy for a first date. You know what is a great energy? Making the person you're with feel like the most important person in the world treating them as if they're interesting, not just asking generic questions like, hey, what do you do for fun? Oh, how long have you been doing your job? How long have you lived here? Oh, that sounds great. 
what movies are you streaming right now? That's not conversation. Passes for conversation, but that's not real conversation. Conversation is when you ask someone a question, really listening to their answer and asking a follow-up question to, that's when people know you're in. That's what makes people feel really good. Not the initial generic question, but the follow-up question that shows, I'm interested in what you have to say. And if you make people feel interesting, they will largely be interested in you. That's Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's not my idea. It just happens to be true. Most people like to talk about themselves. Most people like it when you show interest in their worlds. I always wondered when uh, growing up, and I don't know if this is the same for you, but the grandmother would sit at the head of the table and watch all of the son, her sons and all their kids, the cousins, talking, and she would sort of sit back and preside and no one asked grandma how she was doing, right? But she would ask every kid how they were doing. That's real power. It's not about inserting yourself into the conversation. It's genuinely showing interest in others and giving someone a pleasant experience, like you're the concierge at a hotel. How can I make your evening better? The same way you'd want a guy to show interest in you and ask you questions, right? And to be polite to you and the waiter and the maitre d' and to pick up the check in at the end of the night as a show of generosity. How could I make this experience good for you? Instead of, you know, looking at you, looking at his phone, realizing you don't look like your photo, and then asking for the check. You could scar someone for life that way. I mean, yeah, you'll get out quickly, but you'll scar someone for life that way. And some people think that's fun. I think it's funny to bail on a date when someone misrepresents themselves. As far as I'm concerned, I'm here. I might as well have a good time. I might as well treat this person with a modicum of respect and show interest in their life, even if I know at, within two minutes that I'm never going to see this person again at the end of the night. Why should I make them feel bad about that? Why can't I at least give them a pleasant two hours? Now, the downside of that is that that could be confusing. I thought we had a really great date. Why didn't he call me? Well, I'd rather be the, we had a really great date. Why didn't he call me? Then who was that asshole? who was so rude and inconsiderate and made me feel invisible. It just feels like a, a better way to leave someone. And right? so that's what I would implore you to do, no matter how down you are about dating relationships and men, treat men as individuals who are interesting and worthy, give them the benefit of the doubt. You're not here to figure out your future. You're not here to figure out if you're compatible. You're here to be a pleasant conversationalist who is inquisitive and that inquisitiveness engender someone to like you and also uh, turn the tables right, and ask you more about you. And this is how we could forge connections. Right? This thing we're talking about is a skill set. It's a thing you can develop. Right? Some people have it naturally. Some people have to work at it. Some people never figure it out. I've mentioned before, and I, and I hate to mention it, you know, but my in-laws are, are not inquisitive people. They're very, very nice people, but they don't ask me about me. They don't ask me how I like being my son's basketball coach or what uh, endeavor I'm working on in business or what's motivating me or exciting me or whether I'm going to write another book or the next vacation I want to take with my family. I'm just pretty much the person who fathered the grandkids and right, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm the son-in-law, but I have n almost no identity of, of my own within my wife's family. And so making someone feel seen and heard and important is so invaluable and you could do it for anybody at any time. This isn't just dating advice. This is just good people advice that happens to apply doubly to dating because you only got one chance to make a first impression. So never underestimate the power of being nice. You can't nice your way into a relationship, right? If a guy doesn't find you attractive or you don't find him attractive, it doesn't mean that everything's going to get off the ground, but you could at least have a pleasant interaction that makes you feel positive about people and dating. Wouldn't that make dating a lot more pleasant overall if you're not going to be talking to the one to at least have a nice conversation once a week with a stranger that leaves everybody feeling good about humanity? I think so. So thank you for listening to today's rant. Um, I really do believe in being nice, which doesn't mean I'm a martyr. It doesn't mean I'm nice all the time. But it's, uh, it's certainly an attitude that I tried to cultivate when I was dating to make people feel good about dating and me as an individual, as opposed to making them feel bad just because I didn't think we were compatible. I don't think that's necessary. So that's all I got. Till next time. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.